sponsor teacher, the founder of Vocational Water School, Ms. Catherine Gomez. sit there. <laughs> 20. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Dear Acacia Waldorf School community, another milestone for Acacia. Welcome, Kaimita graduates, our third batch of alumni. How does it feel to join our community's outer circle? There are countless numbers of people to thank for this momentous occasion. First and foremost, we thank you, dear parents and families. Let me put on my glasses. <laughs> for entrusting your greatest treasures to your, our care. It has been an honor and a privilege to be in the company of these young men and women during the significant phases in their lives. We thank all their teachers, particularly this caring high school team of teachers whose guidance has been instrumental in showing them how simply magnificent this world is and how to work their way in it to make it better for the future generations to come. We thank all our mentors, particularly Horst Hellman, who is here. Please give him a round of applause. He is the godfather of the world of with us today. We thank those who run the school so quietly in the background, making sure that the school is indeed a favorable environment for learning and developing. The admin, the auxiliary staff, the board of trustees, and the parent council. And again, thank you, thank you to teacher Sheila for your courage to start the high school. for these guys without you. And we are of course always thankful to the Kiros family for so generously lending us this place we called home all these years. Yes. Today I speak to you not just on behalf of the College of Teachers and the school, today I also speak to you as your high school sponsor. And I don't know how to do this, but I want to face you. I'm so grateful that I was given the opportunity to go full circle with you guys on your last year in Acacia School as, a, as Acacia students. The Kaimito is one of the most homogenous and gel classes we have ever had in the high school. They have this inclusive and welcoming quality able to bring people together. They are accepting, patient, non-judgmental, in a word, very balanced and mature. Individually, without exception, they are confident and secure. There is no doubt in my mind that these young men and women are such because they know they are profoundly loved. We saw it in the graduation dinner they had last Wednesday. Each of them singled out, known and deciphered by so many, their parents and teachers alike. How essential is this to the wholeness of a human being? Stepping into their class was always a joy for any teacher. They are intelligent, engaged, very polite, except for that time with that piano teacher, but that's okay. And respectful and hardworking. Do you agree, teachers? Yes. They were also one of the only two classes in the high school's history that started off as a combined class. And when their class was split in class 10, they had the opportunity to choose their own new name. I didn't know there was so much hesitation. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. And they chose Kaimito, Star Apple. Because of the star, you can find inside the fruit. I also didn't know that they thought they were the, apple, the apples of the, of the school's eyes, which is also true. Yes. 
Now are, they are our newest alumni. Guys, you are alumni. Oh. And the motto they chose for their class to take with them to the next phases of the next phase of their lives is Sik Itur Ad Astra. Thus you shall go to the stars. And wow, astronomy is their favorite subject. A man named Eric Hoffer once said, Our passionate preoccupation with the sky, the stars, and God, somewhere out in outer space, is a homing impulse. We are drawn back to where we came from. So it is our heritage. From the time you, were, you chose your new class name to your last day as Acacia students, you have chosen the star as your guiding symbol. Man has always looked to the stars. These immense celestial beings have provided direction and guidance, a symbol of hope, a steady companion for travelers, the adventurers, the seekers. Kainito, you've had your share of guiding stars, at least in the high school. You went through four sponsors, Ms. Edna, Ms. Binky, Mr. Brian, and I'm so grateful I came in to, um, to close the circle. But did you need to experience all of us, or did we also simply need to experience your brilliance? If I may share with the audience, one afternoon, Ms. Binky and I were privileged to spend some quiet time with these seniors, and I asked them what they would bring to them, uh, what they would bring with them from Waldorf School, from the Waldorf education that they had. And Subin's answer was simply, I found myself. That was a mouthful. She told us how she gained her confidence in Acacia. She said, the teachers think with us. They learn with us. We listen and we are heard. And we feel respected. Kevin's answer was, it's the culture. He learned to do so many things, as he said, that he never thought he could do or even loved to do. Until he came here, such as singing, acting, playing a musical instrument, arts and the, ML and the MLBs, humanities, as it is all part of our curriculum. He said, it is an education about being human. Denise answered, I learned to love learning, even if, or perhaps because, they didn't give us so much. <laughs> at least not all at once. <laughs> learning doesn't mean you have to be pressured. And it is here I gained my confidence. For Rafi, it was also about Acacia's culture that he wants to take with him, the people and the curriculum that he doubted in the beginning. But it does work, Raf, right? At least the blocks, the, the blocks, the um, way we do it and how we teach it. He said he appreciated the small classes because everyone could be heard. Gavin said, as, he's, as he said this evening, Acacia is my home, not because I come here every day, but because of the people. Coming here was like breathing in and breathing out. Boy, that was a mouthful you guys said. It was really like our mission for this school was really done. They all said, I, know, I now know my likes. I also had time to think and listen to other people and not just myself. Acacia was a space where they were given a voice and they could be heard. So now I'd like to give you my brief, not so brief, but brief messages to each of you. Anyway, you're only five, so let's take advantage. <laughs> Kevin, our romantic, who loves the music of the carpenters, a kindred spirit immediately. Kevin, please don't ever lose your beautiful smile. I'm not quite sure when it started to just pour out of him, because right, now I realize in the beginning why he was hardly smiling. Now, you, now I know. But then there came a point when he didn't stop smiling. So please don't ever stop. You are one of the most candid and transparent human beings I have ever met. <laughs> a quality that is so disarming. 
One wants to be only his best in front of you because you have so much faith in goodness and in what is right. You believe in the goodness of people. You see their higher self. You are trusting. I hope you never lose this precious quality, even if you may sometimes end up getting disappointed, like in Florence. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Because remember that anything you do out of kindness and sincerity of heart is never wasted, even if it isn't apparent on the outside. You are an idealist and an optimist in the best sense of the word. You certainly inspired me to always do my best, whether it be in, a, in class or in answering your questions about the school, like, why do we have exams? It's not Waldorf. <laughs> you inspired me to stay as close to the Waldorf principles as possible because I knew you were watching. <laughs> and more importantly, because I knew you cared. And you demanded no less from us. Your enthusiasm, idealism, and courage to question and speak up for what you believe in awakens those who are asleep to their actions. You are the champion of Waldorf. Believe this and speak kindly to yourself. It is good to be a skeptic at times, but never with yourself. You are your best cheerleader, the best friend you could ever have. And no one in this lifetime, or any lifetime, can ever come close to the Kevin that you are the irreplaceable Kevin this world needs. Subin, stunningly beautiful on the inside and out. You are simply a breath of fresh air. Not only did we discover such an amazing actress who worked so hard in her role, you are so full of joy with a real capacity to find depth in what seems to be so simple because you yourself are deep, so deep sensitive, and you possess a golden heart. I had a glimpse of this in your poetry block with your poems, but it was during the Parsifal block when I actually saw the Subin of the heart. When you do a Parsifal block, you eagerly wait for, or watch out for that moment when you can tell yourself the story has done its job and opened hearts. That moment was you, Subin, in Elsie Gatchez. When you came to me to share your realizations, I saw your heart open up like a radiant sunflower, and I knew the block had done its magic. You are truly a sensitive soul. You pay attention to what others may trivialize and what seems inconsequential or unimportant. And this is raised to a different level of appreciating and under, uh, appreciation and understanding. You help us to see with new eyes. I'm so amazed with the transformation I saw in you throughout these three years. Subin, please continue to believe in yourself. You are so much more than the quiet, good girl you had, you had to be growing up. Everything we do is our self-portrait, so continue to unfold and create big self-portraits, not just in drawing, but in all you do. Because really, Subin, you are so big. Not physically, huh? Physically, you are perfect. <laughs> it's everything else about you. You are so persevering and amazingly hardworking like a bull. I don't just trust, but know you will leave a big and beautiful mark on the lives of all people you will come across. And they will not be left unchanged. Denise. Today, she said, this, these were her words, Today, I am whole, just like the perfect rose that is there you know, as, the, as our backdrop. As a teacher and a co-founder of the school, I tell you, Denise, hearing those words from you that day was the fulfillment of my dreams. It is what we wish for every student, this realization. No one could ask for more. And how funny what you mentioned in your speech, because I'm about to mention it too. I remember those days in class seven. I already saw brilliance, even if, even if you didn't seem to recognize it yourself. But I see you now after five years. The radiance and clarity of this diamond that you have become cannot be ignored. I am here. 
You have turned out to be this amazing, balanced, confident woman. What more is there to say? Except that I will truly miss you around the campus. You were one of those in Guava that I felt the desire to protect and to nurture. Maybe because you were so good, so trusting, and so courageous to ask for help. Teach her, teach me to be louder. I will never ever forget those humble words of yours. You have such great humility, especially for someone so gifted. It isn't just your amazing capacities and your diligence that astound me. It is truly your humble attitude and open nature. You have worked so hard. And now the choices are at your feet. Ooh. You deserve this. You deserve it all. I know you will make the right one. Never forget what you yourself have worked so hard to realize. Relax and enjoy every moment of every day. Remember why you love Acacia and create your Acacia space wherever you go. I know your brilliance will continue to shine wherever your heart's desire leads you. Rafi. This old young soul. There is a saying that goes, Rafi, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. This is you, Rafi. You care so much about people. I felt this very, the very first year you came in. I always felt so cared for and appreciated, you can say appreciated, always appreciating the teachers in your presence, even as a young boy. Your mother told me she herself sensed that you had a depth in you that is quite unique. I remember when you decided to join the basketball team in grade eight and nine, or nine, not because you loved basketball, but because the team needed you, because they needed the numbers. So it was not his favorite sport, but he joined. And then you eventually learned to love it and get good at it. People matter to you. You are so good with people genuinely interested in their well-being. You embrace people with your heart and your faith. Ultimately, you know what matters most in all of, the, all of our endeavors in life, relationships. Someone once said, it's not about the state of the art, it's about the state of the heart. And the state of your heart, Rafi, is pretty sound. You come from a space of authenticity, especially when it matters. I think this is why, as Kokoi said in the, the dinner table, at uh, the gratitude dinner, for your role in the play, you could just stand there the whole time and say nothing. You didn't even need words. So loud was the presence of your heart. And now more than ever, the world needs people of the heart. P.S. I know you dance to a different drum. You always have. I could barely do anything to change that. And I have to say, the wait was always worth it. But because in our fast pace of just doing and doing, this quality is indeed a virtue. Harmonize your beat with the heartbeat of the world, and you will do great things that only you can do. And lastly, dearest Gavin, after hearing your mother's story and her search far and wide for that perfect school for you, now I know why you turned out so whole and confident in your own time. You are so fiercely loved, so extravagantly loved by so many. It is amazing, it is an amazing thing what love can do. Yes, I agree with your mom. I think we balanced each other. <laughs> a mom at home and a mom in school. You were so endearing when you came, always trying so hard to do your best. I remember worrying about your asthma a lot hearing stories about how responsible you were as an older brother to Hayden, and I would be so proud of you. 
I would hear about your naughty side. Now I know it came from your dad. <laughs> uh, but I could only see your goodness. You, I consider the Waldorf child at heart. You didn't have to discover it. You were it. And maybe this is why you had to go back during your senior year and ask yourself, what was that all about? And chose this as your senior project. It was really finding out not just about Waldorf, but about yourself. And here you are now, a handsome, confident young adult. I am most amazed when you talk about your own self-transformation, the habits you were able to shake off through your own self-realizations in your own time. No rush, just magical. You are such a wonderful testimony to the metamorphosing of a butterfly. Quietly, steadily, secretly, but not without a lot of heartaches. You had to bear, like the caterpillar in its cocoon that literally turns to juice to transform. Then one day, unexpectedly, so discreetly, you emerge from the chrysalis, a radiant butterfly, but still very recognizable, perhaps because you managed to keep your caterpillar smile. I'm so looking forward to all that you will become. Continue to follow your path steadily. Breathe. Continue to believe in yourself. I know you will do great things that will indeed make this world a better place. And with that, I would just like to tell you all, each and every one of you, Subin, Gavin, Denise, Kevin, Rafi, I'm so very, very proud of you. Now, just another three pieces of advice after Susan, if I may add. I'll try to make it brief, too. Number one, from gut to glory. What could that mean? From art, music, poetry, to architecture, history has shown a man's journey from sleep to awakening, from unconscious wisdom to conscious knowing. This is our story. Whatever you choose to do in your life from this day forth, know you have developed both these capacities, your gut and intuition through the arts and your reasoning and logic through your academic subjects. Always remember how these two subjects intertwine. Trust and use both these capacities when making your judgments and decisions. And number two, just love. When we started Acacia, I don't think we fully understood why we created it. What we had was an impulse, an inspiration to create this school and very little imagination. It is an only in pursuing this dream, day in and day out, that we slowly realized what was in fact the driving impulse of this endeavor. And the answer was very simple, love. For love is the only reality. It is the only original gift the human being brings to this world as an individual. He doesn't discover it. It is born every day out of every choice he makes and every deed he does. This is the impulse that creates not just careers, but vocations, not just schools, but communities transforming drudgery into duty. No one can love in your place. This is why we all matter. It is irreplaceable, genuine, and unique as we all are. And lastly, be present to the present. Don't limit your dreams to the limit of your imagination because there are things that are possible that our imagination simply cannot fathom. Search inward for your heart's desire. Decide on what dream you truly wish to turn into a reality. Then, take that first step, and then the second. And every day, 
Just simply show up for work and do what needs to be done for that day, for that moment. Persevere, not looking far into the future, but enjoying every single moment of the journey. Check your trajectory from time to time, but don't stay there. Check your purpose from time to time, but don't limit yourself to these. More reasons will unfold as you pursue this dream. Always come back to the present moment, our greatest gift, where all the secrets lie. Be present to the present. Only here is where we can co-create with our creator. And when there seems to be very little or no progress at all, press on. And before you know it, you will find that you have created a whole new reality. So, right, Mr. Sebastian? So, Kaimita <laughs> class, as you go off into this world, continue to know, to know yourself, what is ever changing and what is constant, what is ephemeral and what is essential. And if you someday choose to reach that unreachable star, go for it. Remember your heritage. You are that star. Go shine your brilliant light to the world. Your Acacia community is so proud of you. The whole Waldorf, Waldorf world movement is so proud of you. We will miss your presence in Acacia dearly and will eagerly await your return. Your blocks will be waiting for you. I love you so much, each of you, from the bottom of my heart. Watch out, world, here they come. <laughs>